nth roots. I thought, ooh, I thought you said nth roots. Nth. I still got a piece of that candy in my mouth. <laughs> it's kind of sticky. Nth roots and rational exponents. So we're going to talk about nth roots first. Y'all try to contain yourself now. I know y'all are excited and everything. But let's settle down a little bit. Making too much noise. It was a joke, y'all. My <laughs> goodness. All right. When we do square roots. Square root? Tell me the thought process you go through. What times itself would give you 25? What times itself? So I'm looking at something Five. times itself two times, right? So if I told you that all this time, you know math has a lot of imaginary type stuff in it. Like yeah. if there's on. not a coefficient there, then there's a one. If there's not an exponent, there's a one. What if I told you that all along there was an imaginary number that sat right outside the radical, right in this little spot here, and it was a two? I've seen it on the calculator. Would you understand why it's a two? Yeah. Because you're looking for what times itself twice, right? Two times. So if then I changed that little two there to, let's say, a three, and be careful how you write it because it kind of sits in the little seat right there in front of the radical. If I change that to a three, and let's say I did 64. What now, can y'all see that? What times is that layer? What times itself, this time, three times, absolutely would give you 64. You have learned it before or you have not? I mean, like, just the two and three. On or off? Oh, oh, oh. The two and three? So, and it's pretty self-explanatory. It's not real bad. So I'm looking at what times itself, three times, would give me 64. One, two, three. What is it? Do you know? Four. The difference now, remember here when I do this one, I have to do plus or minus five. I don't have to do that on the odd roots because I can put a negative number under an odd root this time. Do you know why? If it was this, what times itself three times gives you negative 64? If, what'd you say? Negative four, right? Because a negative times a negative gives you a positive, and then times another negative gives you a negative. So odd roots are going to follow that sign, okay? So this is our key, is this little number that sits right out here. Yeah, sure. Let me show you on your calculator if I can find my little emulator on the there. If you look, if you go into, oh, I forget it. Let me use my mouse here. Someone's here. All right, if you look, if you click that math button, and even the non-graphing calculators all, all should have an option somewhere on there for an nth root. Notice number four, number five. Four is a third root, and five says an x root, okay? Um, if you just want the four, third root, which is what we were doing right here, then I could just select third root, negative 64, and enter, okay? What about second root? Second root is, that's your, kind of your default root, so you can just do second and the square root there. Mm -hmm. Um... If you need a bigger root though, like let's say I wanted the fifth root, you have to put the root first, so you'd hit five. Then you go back into that math root and you call up option five here, the X root. And then whatever, if you wanted 64, the fifth, that doesn't have a perfect root, but 
It tells you what number times itself. Five times gives you 64. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. Well, then, I will continue. All right, so we call them nth roots because generally when you put a variable in, you'll say the nth root of some number A. And that's the way your homework will be, um, be arranged for a part of it. So if I asked you to find the nth root of A and I told you that N was 6 and A was 64, what do you think that would be? It's two. Now here's my question. Plus or minus two. Yes. Why? Because it's even. Because it's an even root. Everybody understands that? So even roots are plus or minus. Odd roots keep their sign. Does that make sense? Let's say I was solving an equation. If my pen will write. Um, get them, get them, get them. 28. Tell me how you go about solving that. What's your first step? Um, divide it by 4. Divide it by 4. Everybody knows that, right? We're sad mapping our way out because x is only written in there one time. All right, so I got 32. Now the question becomes, how in the world do I get rid of this? You fifth root it, absolutely. If you think about when I had x squared equals some number, to get rid of this, I square rooted it. And now that you know a square root has an imaginary 2 in it, well then if I take that same root here, so if I do the fifth root, that's going to cancel out that exponent there. So fifth root both sides. Is it a plus or a minus, or does it keep the sign? Keep the sign. Why? It's an odd root. Two times two is four, times two is eight, times two is 16, times two is 32. Does that make sense? Speak now for every hundred piece. All right, this one's going to throw you a little bit, maybe. Hopefully not. And remember, I'm sad mapping my way back out. So what's the very first thing I want to do here? Exponent, right? Because parentheses are last. So when you do the exponent, how do you get rid of it? What? Isn't that one where you get x plus 5 times x plus 5? Well, here, since x is only written one time, I can sad map my way back out of it. Now, if it was written more than one time, I'd have to find another method to do it. If you start doing that, you're going to end up with a quartic that's going to be hard to solve. But here, because I'm sad map and parentheses are last, I can take care of the exponent first. So to get rid of an exponent of 4, what do I do? Fourth root. Right? Some of y'all are saying square root, but fourth root. Now here's where you have to really think back to those radical skills you had. I got x plus 5 equals what? What's the fourth root of 16? 2. 2 or? Plus or minus 2, right? Because it's an even root. So that means that x plus 5 is 2. Or x plus 5 is negative 2. Yes? Solve for x. Negative 3 or... Ah! My hand's getting ahead here. Negative 7. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. One more thing to talk about. Then. I'll give you a second to... All right, rational exponents. Do, 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 do. What's the rational number? 
A number that can be expressed as the ratio, a fraction, the ratio of two numbers. So here I'm talking about fraction exponents, okay? What if I told you Remember, this is an imaginary two if it's not indicated. What if I told you that you could rewrite any radical as an exponent? <gasps> what? The root here becomes the denominator of a fraction here. So what, you may ask, would the numerator be? One. One. Because the numerator is the exponent that's hooked. Well, you can't really say cutting in half because it's times by itself. Yeah, we'll be using fractions. Oh, my Lord. So the root becomes the denominator of the exponent. Okay? The... This, the reason the one is the numerator is because, you can just leave it cracked if you want to, Daniel. It's because there's an imaginary exponent of one there, okay? Let's say I had the fifth root of x squared. What would the exponent be there? Two over five. Two over five. So I'll tell y'all a funny story. <laughs> a few, <laughs> I hadn't told it yet. A few years ago, I had a foreign exchange student from Brazil. And I never knew exactly what he was gonna say. Uh, well, I couldn't understand a lot of what he said. Um, but he had already learned this in Brazil. And um, he said, he asked if he could come to the board and show the way they taught it in Brazil. And I was like, Okay, you know, not knowing what he was going to say, but it was actually one of these really dumb things that is, it's so dumb that it forced, you remember it. You know what I'm talking about? One of those little dumb sayings or doing, so I'm going to show you what he did because I think it'll help you remember how to switch the forms. This, by the way, is called radical form. This is called rational exponent form. Let me show you what my foreign exchange student showed me. I'm going to draw a sunshine in the middle. This is dumb. I'm forewarning y'all right now. That's my son. I was never an artist. <laughs> okay. So. All right. Let's say I have... The cube root of x to the second, okay? What he said was, notice two things. If the sun is shining here, I know the base is going to be x, right? And I know I'm going to have a fraction. The sun is shining. Which one is getting all the sunshine in this problem? Well, the two's covered because it's in the shade. The three's outside, right? So they change form so nobody gets sunburned. So now he's under the shade, and this one comes out of the shade and goes in the sun. Oh my God. What? <laughs> I told you it was dumb. I can't even remember that. If they're in the shade in one form, then they're not in the other. It does work, and I don't know why it stuck in my head the way it did. And when he explained it, I mean, on our final exam, I kid you not, I had students coming up going, I can't remember what to do. And I would look at them and say, sunshine? Oh, that's right. And they knew exactly what to do at that point. Also, just switch it. Yeah, it just... How long ago was this? It's been a while. <laughs> All right. So, let's see. <laughs> What we're going to do, we're going to evaluate some expressions 
Yeah. But in order to do that evaluation, we're going to need to change the form first. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, yeah, you better want another story today. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to do these without a calculator, okay? So I want you to think about this for just a minute. If I need to evaluate without a calculator, first thing I got to do, when I look at it, I go, hmm, I'm not real sure. If you ever get stumped and you're not real sure, change the form, okay? In other words, sunshine it, okay? If I change the form here, what does this become? What's the root? Three. Two. Two. And then the, base. the base is 16. What's the exponent? All right. And I'm going to tell you, it doesn't matter if you do the square root first or if you do the cube first. Okay. You can cube 16 and then take the square root. Or you can square root 16 and then take the third power. I'm going to choose to do the square root first. Why do you think? Don't know. Smaller and what do you notice about 16? It's a perfect square. What's the square root of 16? Four. Four and four to the third power is 64. Where do you get four from? The square root of 16. So two has nothing. Oh, that's all you got to do? The two is the square root. Do we have it? Because every time you have a square root, it's a Let's see if you can recall some exponent properties from chapter two you just took a test on. Okay, so first thing that first thing that I see is that big old negative exponent. Yeah, that's what I was like. What? What do you do with negative exponents? Have to switch it. Okay, one over nine to the one half. Do you agree? What? Yeah. Remove it whenever it's negative. Oh, wow. Make it positive. Yep. It's a whole big thing. What is 9 to the 1 half? Remember, I can't use a calculator, so I might want to... How do you know, Juliana? It's half of 9 is 3. No, no, no. Not half of 9, but the what? Not half of... Exactly, the square root. I knew you were, say, you were thinking the right thing. You just said the wrong word. It's the square root of 9. Because the bottom number is the root, the top number is the exponent. And the square root of 9 is? Hold on, let me write one of these things. Oh, my goodness. Is this it? You try one. We're not going to go any more detail with this one. Try it. Tell me what you get. Don't blur it out, but. A <laughs> No. All right, look, let's do this together. What's the root? And the exponent is 3. 81 is a perfect fourth root. I always start, if I'm trying to figure it out, 3. I always, yes, it's 3. I always start at 2 because normally, if the bigger the root is, you got to think that number gets big fast, okay? So it's probably going to be two, three, or four, if I had to guess. It is three because three times three is nine, times three is 27, and 27 times three is 81, okay? Mm. So I get three to the third power, which is 27. 27. Gang, gang, gang. Okay, let's make sure you can put a couple in your calculator. That's what the non calculator portion will look like. Let's make sure you can do a couple with your calculator. Yeah. I'm almost done. This is the last thing, I promise. How long is the video? Is that all that we did? Did we do anything before that one? No, yeah. You want to dab out a bird's look? Put this on your calculator. Tell me what you get. Yellow boy puts it on the side. This one's not a perfect cube. Nothing times itself three times gives you 64. Actually, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Never mind. Don't do that one. Don't do that. Do. Do this one. Four to the two fifths. Yeah. 
Man, we weren't even talking. Gosh, I wasn't even thinking. I was thinking. That is a perfect question. I was thinking three halves, not two thirds. <laughs> Nothing times itself. That's a, All right, so four to the two fifths. What did you get when you put it in your calculator? Yes. What? I ain't plugging in. Be careful. Yes, when you do it. When you do it, be very careful because because it's a fraction up in the exponent like that. We're going to have to do 4 raised to the, then do your parentheses, 2 divided by 5. Fractions always go in parentheses. Get in the habit of putting it in parentheses. For this one, it would work, um, but that's not always the case. For this one, yes. But we'll be doing some that are a little more complex than that. All right.